Yeah, the sonar's lit up, so. All right, so what's this Chris guy's story, Rutch? You know, we kind of kept in touch a little bit. And feel like the right God, one? I'm on fire. <laughs> Some days on the boat, when it's your day, it's your day. So this is similar to the Keys. I think what you're going to see, buddy, is very similar to the Keys. The fact that digging like a grouper. <laughs> yeah, it is. Or a red snapper. You know, and I was looking at the meter, and I'm thinking, grouper. It looks like it's got some weight. It's not too often that you mistake another fish for a big grouper. That's got to be a pretty good one, the way he's giving you a fit like that. My name is Ali Husseini. I grew up in Southern California and now operate one of the largest sport fishing websites in the Just world. Just another day at the office. My office, not yours. <laughs> I'm Rush Maltz. I got you, what you saying? Florida Keys native and career fishing guide for the past 20 years. Fish, when I come out to California, you can let me catch all the 300 pound tuna. Our passion is our profession, and we know there's more to fishing than just the catch. There's a good mark right there. That's what I like to see. That's the one. He's not superstitious, because that's bad luck. Woo. All right, get with him. Come with him. We explore the people, places, and species that make up the culture of fishing. So what's this Chris guy's story, Rutch? So Chris, as far as I know, grew up right here. You know, after being on so many good trips with Ali, I mean, we Baja, Puerto Vallarta, I mean, the list goes on of all the trips we've done together so far. Well, I wanted to reciprocate that. So you know him for a long time. He was oh, up there for- I probably met Chris 20 years ago. Wow. This trip for Rush was a lot like a Baja trip for me. You know, now the heavy lifting's on Rush, and we haven't done that yet. Oh, look who decided to show Yo. up this morning. Cap Morrison. Hey, fellas. What's up, buddy? You Chris. <laughs> Chris Morrison came to the Keys about 20 years ago, and I had the opportunity to meet him. You're in my front yard now. I was in yours for a while. Oh, yeah. Chris is definitely, you know, a South Carolina boy. He grew up here. He was playing in the marsh, chasing alligators and fish and deer and doing all those things, you know, that you'd imagine a southern kid did. And then, you know, like a lot of guys from small towns, he kind of wanted to see what was out there. I hope you're ready. Prime time right now, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, right on. Oh, Everything's awesome. biting. Yeah, right. when I ended up in the Keys back in the uh, mid-90s, and I met Rush through some mutual friends I was fishing and spear fishing and diving with. We kind of ended up in a circle of the same people, having those friends in common over all the years. You know, we kind of kept in touch a little bit. And... When Chris finally hit the Keys, he really planted some roots. You know, he started guiding, he started fishing, he got a CV, he was doing some backcountry stuff, and he was there for over 20 years. But like so many of those small town guys, I think you get a little bit older, and you know your parents are getting a little older, you're not seeing them as much as you'd like to. It was time for him to come home. And you grew up right here, right? Right here in McClellanville. Now my front yard's just a couple of docks down, actually where I, where I spent my childhood. You know, seeing some of Chris's catches, you know, made me think in my head, you know, this is a no-brainer. It's as simple as putting the boat on the trailer, taking the tackle, coming up here, and we're gonna catch a lot of the same species we catch back home. What are the bigger groupers? Those be gags? There's some big gags out here, and um, I haven't caught one since I moved back up here yet, but there's some black grouper up here too. Oh, really? And they call those freight trains up here. And, um, you know, when Rush was kind of telling me about this fishery and sort of showing me some of the pictures, there was really two sides to it. First and foremost, for both me and Rush, we love to do that bottom fishing, that Key West style, grouper, snapper, whatever. But then there was also sort of a side of offshore in the form of mahis, some black fins, and some wahoo. How See far you. are we running? Oh, uh, uh, if we get the weather for it, we'll probably be looking at about 50 miles. Oh, wow. Uh, but we got, we got stops before we get out that far that we can uh, pull off some hopefully some good catches on. Let's go get some ice, get this program on the road. I'm not sure if it's the local way of fishing here, but Chris's program, not surprisingly, was very similar to Rush's. First thing in the morning, start that day off, and you guessed it, get bait. Bump me ahead like five feet, just a little bit. It's funny to come like up it. here though, you know, we're using the same techniques. We're throwing a cast net on yeah. some bait first thing in the morning. And much like we do in the Keys, when you're getting bait, one bait probably isn't going to be enough. So you're going to want to have your smaller live baits, you know, which are pilchards in the Keys, 
but up here it's pogies, a menhaden. They're swimming out the horn of the net. So many. <laughs> Smashed them. Oh, those are beautiful pogies. They are Imagine really having those good. in Louisiana. Thing in the morning, we're gonna throw the net, we're gonna catch a well full of pogies because we knew that was pretty easy. They're right here, right next to the boat. You can almost throw the net off the dock and catch as many as you needed. What was that, 100, 200 pieces? 200, I bet. That's I enough bottom baits, right? Unless you're gonna, be, you're gonna be throwing them on the surface. The second part of the agenda was to look for some cigar minnows and sardines. They're about 30, 20 to 30 feet. There, there it is, right there. Right. Unless that's your sabiki, I'm marking. That might be your sabiki. No, no it's that's bait right there. We made our way out to a little spot Chris had. Big Mark comes up on the machine. Started picking at a few. Unfortunately, the predator is really bad. Oh, I got one. What's that, Rush? Got one? Is that a cigar minnow? Yeah, it's a cigar minnow. I never caught one. Yeah, I got a D hooker right here. If there's bait around, there's gonna be kingfish, there's gonna be barracudas, there's gonna be all kinds of little shark. Yeah, you got a kingfish problem here, buddy. <laughs> Look out, Ollie, his fish coming this way. Look familiar, Ollie? Never seen one before. It's still better than a silky. Yeah, well, we're gonna turn him into bait, I think, huh? Yeah, let's do that. And sometimes, you know, they're just not gonna let you get the bait off the bottom, especially when you're fishing in deeper water. There's definitely more predator marks than I'm used to seeing right here. As hard as we tried, we could land a few baits and catch a few baits, but it wasn't as many as we would have liked to make. Luckily enough, we had our backup plan, the pogies. Local knowledge is brought to you by Evinroot, fastest, cleanest, smartest. The only outboard that lets you have it all. Pen, let the battle begin. Yeti, built for the wild. Sea Keeper, once you feel it, you will never boat without it. The Florida Keys and Key West, come as you are. Bubba, the ultimate lifestyle. Nomad Design, crafted by experience and by bdoutdoors.com. So what yeah. are we gonna do here, Chris? What are we gonna start off with? Well, let's see Obviously, what we got under the boat, bud. We're marking let's... some good fish there. You, I mean, beeliners, triggers. That's probably what we're looking at, and some red snapper hopefully down there, a grouper possibly. You know, Chris really is a smart fisherman. The, and what I mean by that is he's a guy trying to put pieces together. Is this just a hard bottom spot or is it a wreck? That's right, yeah, it's a low relief hard bottom spot. Okay. And uh, yeah, I haven't seen anything that sticks up more than a foot or two on the sonar. Really? So yeah, but it holds a lot of fish. Life, yeah. yeah, the sonar's lit up, so. And you could just tell, he puts a lot of thought into every spot. He's got notes of what he caught on each spot. He remembers, you know, this spot was better this month, this spot was better the other. It's my kind of fishing. Well, that didn't take long. This reminds me of bottom fishing back when Captain Rush used to care. <laughs> <laughs> what do we got here? There's a tugger. I bet there's a trigger fish. I bet there's a trigger fish. That's a big old porgy. Whew. Turbo porgy. I think that I can guess a... where he's gonna spend the night. <laughs> that is a turbo porgy. <laughs> you know, starting off, our first spot was a beeliner spot, and we really want to target those guys. So this is similar to the Keys. I mean, we're trying to build life, get these guys going. I think what you're gonna see, buddy, is very similar to the Keys. That's one of those porgies, wow. isn't it? Yeah, man, a red porgy. Now, I hear these are excellent eating. Uh, they're good fried, yeah, really good, I love them. There were some porgies mixed in, and Chris is getting a couple of them, you know, and I was looking at the meter, and I'm thinking, grouper. It looks like it's got some weight. Looks I tell you what, it's either a grouper or maybe a red snapper. Yeah, they fight pretty hard. And so I kind of did the Key West thing. Found the biggest bait I could in the tank, pinned it on with a sliding rig, dropped it to the bottom, and wouldn't you know, you stampy. called it. Yeah, man, nice one. God, I love it. Oh, that's a beautiful stamp. Oh, yeah. Beautiful stamp. There Look you go. That. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Look yeah, at that. Buddy. A lot of the groupers I've seen Chris catching up here are the gags and scamps. You got it going on. You must have a hot spot right there in that corner of the boat. Look at the Come over top of you. Yeah, man. That is an awesome fish, man. I'm telling you, I love scamps. They are nice sized ones. Real big scamps and gags. Oh! Get that trigger. 
That's not a trigger, is it? Stud trigger. No way. No, it's a grouper. That's a grouper. What do you think, Rush? Back to digging like a grouper. No, yeah, it is. Or a red snapper. Oh, that, that I went right for the bottom. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say that's a big grouper. My favorite part about being out there is finding fish. I just like to hunt fish. I like to find specific kinds of fish. That's a scampi, that's a good one. Yeah. Yeah, that would be a huge one if that's what it is. Is he floating? Uh, yeah, yeah that's, what's, that's what's weird. I see grouper collar. Don't know? Red snapper collar? Yeah, No, grouper, grouper collar. Oh, oh God. God. I, did it again. Beautiful scamp. You boys yeah, gotta buddy. try this. It's so much fun. Some days on the boat, when it's your day, it's your day, and you could just do no wrong. Look at that. I, he fought hard. I thought it was, uh, you know, was going to be a little bigger. Red snap. Oh, one a bee liner. Of, one of my -liner. favorite fish. Oh, that is cool. <laughs> Here, I'll eat. So he's like a fat yellowtail snapper. God, they're they're very closely related to yellowtails. No complaints here. Thank you, Chris. Good job. That, Man, that's, that didn't take long, did it? No, that is some good grouper fishing right there. There's just days where you're going to just be in the corner. You're holding your mouth right. And today was Ollie's day. Could be, could be in the large trigger family. I'll go, my, I'll go mine so small. Me and Chris are sitting there fishing. You know, we're catching porgy after porgy. And here's Ali in his infamous corner that he loves, pulling up big scamp after big scamp. Why is your beeliner bigger than my grouper? <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Yours could eat mine. Dude, he wants to eat yours. That is a nice fish, man. That's a solid scamp you got there, Ali. Uh, I'm digging this scamp fishing, buddy. Thank oh, you so yeah. much. Ali. Be the right one. That, that looks good. Might be the right one. Oh, what is this? There you go, my friend. Oh, it's a giant. Mm. Once again, I'll leave to eat mine. <laughs> <laughs> so you ready to move South Carolina yet, Rush? <laughs> Look at there. Well, that's a good one. I think the reason Chris was even surprised to see as many grouper there as we did was because he'd never really set up on that spot. He's healthy. And by set up, I mean put the anchor down, get the chum going, start building some life. You know, you catch a few snappers, they get everything riled up, they're throwing up what they had in their stomach. He's coming towards your line, watch out. I'm gonna have to put your rod tip under mine, possibly, because he's probably already around you. It's a porgy. Like I'm clear, a big old porgy. Yeah. Jeez. Big old porgy. Turbo porgy. Rush and I love fishing for groupers. And I think that's because of two reasons, really. The fight and eating them. Feel like oh the right God, one? I'm on fire. It looks like the right one, the way that rod's oh, bending. I cannot get a Are bait to the bottom. <laughs> huh? I just can't believe how good this is. <laughs> Here, we knew there was a lot of groupers. We knew there was a lot of the same groupers in the Keys, but we were hoping there'd be more of them and bigger. Hey, Chris, you want to do a TV show? <laughs> <laughs> Today, I'd like to. That'd be nice. Another, Another beauty. Another beauty. Really? Damn. Holy cow. <laughs> oh, you said just let it fly. Is that better? That'll yeah, work. Pretty they are. The prize of all the groupers, as far as eating goes, is definitely the scamp. And so Rush wanted to take some scamp home. I've only caught a handful of them. That was definitely one of our highline target species. Well, you want them? I'll take them. I can only catch porgy. <laughs> <laughs> I just got pecked off again. It seems like uh, when I'm fishing with Ali every once in a while, he tends to get a little competitive. Oh. Oh, on the rail. Oh, you got him. Especially when he's one up in me a little bit, you know? I, I mean, it doesn't take but one or two, and he's in my ear. Oh, I'm getting bigger. There you go, Bubba. Getting bigger. So, that, so now what? We don't keep him unless they're 12 pounds and up? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> God, it's a, still a beautiful fish, man. Guys back home would go crazy over this. They are beauties. Guys anywhere go crazy over You get this. those back home though, Rush. Oh yeah. Yeah, I seen you. We get them back home, but just not, nice ones. Every, not every drop. Yeah. We don't get them every drop normally, you know. We're just, we no. get them though. Look at that fish, man. So Beauty. Rad. One of the first things I noticed, even pulling up to the bait spot, and it's one of the things that really defines a healthy fishery. 
is the fact that there's so many predatory fish around. Came up off the bottom to eat it. Grouper? I don't know, it felt like it. Maybe it's a giant trigger, but it's pulling dry. Yeah, 20 feet off the bottom, Rush. Grouper. Another one. Oh, beautiful. Another grouper. I think they're fired up now. I guess try and so. catch one on, I'm gonna try and catch one on a jig. So that's a good scam. The ones you caught that, earlier are awesome scam. Yeah. That's for real. That's, that's a good scam. That is. You know, the ones you caught earlier. We have I mean, you know me, Rush. I'm always trying to be awesome. You want to try to vent them? You know, when the big, large predatory fish are around, that fishery, that, that fish stock is healthy. Get him, Rushy. It's not too often that you mistake another fish for a big grouper. That's got to be a pretty good one, Rush, Ways he's giving you a fit like that. Local Knowledge is brought to you by CV Boats, Lead the Way, Costa, See What's Out There, Mustad, The Standard in Saltwater, Aftco, Any Fish, Any Water, Sea Deck, Your Boat Deserves Sea Deck, JL Audio, How We Play, Casa Vieja Lodge, Experience five-star angling in tropical Guatemala. The Saltwater Angler, Key West. And by Taco Marine. Oh, yeah. Fishing on the bottom, I mean, there's a lot of different species that, you know, are going to come after your bait. Is it, is it big? Oh, a big old snapper if it's a snapper. Or a giant trigger. That's got to be a pretty good one, Rushway. He's giving you a fit like that. Go, <sighs> Rushy. That's a good one. You know, there's not a lot of fish that you would mistake for a big grouper. But up here, they grow those snapper large. What do we have on here for leader 40? That's right. I see him. It might be a big old grouper. That would be sick. No, it's a big old red. Oh, it's a big red. Big old That's red, cool. dude. Look at the size of this thing. We catch a lot of red snapper back in the Keys, you know? That's a lunker red right there. Look at that thing. Woo, that is a pretty fish. Wow, that's Let's the biggest one I've ever caught. Me personally, I've caught a ton of them. I just haven't caught any giants, you know? I want to say personally, the biggest red snapper I've ever caught was 15 pounds until coming to these waters. That's what I'm talking about. Jeez. <laughs> Dude, that is a stun. That's why they call it a red snapper. Oh my God, <laughs> look at that thing. Look at that. What a dog. 15 pounds, Chris, 18 Shoot. pounds, 20? He's, he's over 20, I'd say. You know, when fishing's good at this point in my life, I'm content. That is a stud. You know, I've caught red snappers in a lot of places, you know, a bunch of them in Louisiana. I've caught a few in Florida. I've seen a lot of red snapper on the internet. A little inhaling. Oh my God. You're not going there, dude. Big one red snapper. <laughs> You get like, worked over there? Yeah, absolutely, just like you were. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh, yeah. Maybe he's taken, huh? Why are you trying to beat my red snapper? <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy how the bite changed over to a different species. <laughs> that's not crazy. That's awesome, Chris. Yeah, it is. <laughs> that's just what we were looking for. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> Holy crap, these things are strong. Oh, they Ooh, that's a big Greg. one. Oh, Goodness, Greg. That is a big one. Oh, oh my boy. God. <laughs> oh, boy. Look at that thing. But man, when you get a fish that probably averages in most places five, seven, eight pounds, and you pull up the biggest specimen that those things come in, I mean, a true conservative 30 pound snapper, red snapper. I mean, that's why you saltwater fish. That's about the size of that Dude, one. Dude, that I can't even be a snapper. Look at that. Look at that. Let me take a picture Holy of that Holy F. I can't, it's too heavy. Wow. Oh my God. Yeah, buddy. That is a monster. That is what I'm talking about. Oh, look at the head on it. It's like a truck. Yeah, it is. 
just keeps stuff <laughs> great. You never know what's gonna eat your bait. You never know which heartbreak fish was the one. And then when you do bring that one up and you hoist them out of the water, it's a special thing. Dude, this might be the best one anchor drop spot I've ever been on, Chris. Thank you. You're welcome. Chris, you about got me. <laughs> you know, coming off to such a good start, get your mind racing, right? You've just had the best bottom fishing session you've ever had, and you haven't even gone outside yet. We haven't even looked for a wahoo. We haven't even tried to see what the mahi fishing's like. We haven't gone deep dropping for snowy grouper or whatever else. It really makes your mind race with the possibilities that the ocean holds for you. That is what I'm talking about. 